Well, yeah, so, I mean, <clears throat> I, I wrote about this in The Plant Paradox, that I had this gentleman in his 60s, bad diabetic, came in with a heart attack, scheduled him for surgery, and the next morning we're in the pre-op room, and the guy is trembling like a leaf, and he says, I can't go through this. Oh, and I've learned enough that if somebody is that terrified, don't go put them to sleep and no. do it because something probably is not going to work out very well. Uh, fear. Mm -hmm. um, so I said, okay, I'll make you a deal. I said, you got to follow everything I do, tell you to do. And if you do it, I can guarantee you I will not have to operate on you. But if you don't do it, you know, you're coming back here and we're going to do this. Well, that was now 10 years ago. He's not a diabetic. He has no coronary artery disease. Wow. He, and, you know, he comes in <clears throat> twice a year now and just, you know, and we do stress tests on him. And, and you know, and he, that, he became one of my best patients. Wow. And, you know. So you were going to do a Yeah, heart oh, we were wheeling him into surgery. And the guy's shaking like a leaf going, I don't think I can do this. I said, okay, here's the deal. Wow. That's crazy. Oh, yeah, we always reminisce. Say, you know, he says, you know, it's been 10 years now, and you know, <clears throat> I followed what you told me. And I said, yeah, here you are. You don't have a scar in your chest. I said, you're really bad for business. <laughs> <laughs> so what were, the, uh, what were the few things you told him that he went out and did? Was there, like, some specific exact things he did? Yeah. Um, well, I, I do this in, in all my books. So we're... Actually, Jack, uh, my my staff always told me don't don't say this story because if people get the wrong idea, <laughs> Jack Elaine, I got to know Jack Elaine yeah. late, late in his life. Yeah, he was actually an advisor to our Arthritis Institute in Palm Springs, and so you know Jack was the godfather of fitness. I mean, mm -hmm. come on, let's give yeah. him a stew. The juicer, yeah, the, the juicer. That was his big mistake. But anyway, <laughs> so uh, Jack Elaine used to have this expression: is that if it tastes good, spit it out. Mm -hmm. And my, you know, I obviously like to sell books and my, you know, my staff said, don't say that because then they think they're going to eat twigs and weeds and it's going to taste awful and, you know, you got to eat bad tasting food. Well, that's not what he meant. He actually meant that you should not be eating for this two inch by three inch piece of muscle, your tongue. But you should be eating for the microbiome, for the yeah. bacteria and <clears throat> all the other cute little viruses that actually live in your gut, live in your mouth, live on your skin. And if you eat for them, they will take care of you because mm -hmm. you are actually their home. Mm -hmm. We're merely a condominium for bugs. And, and how many bugs do we have on our body or in so, us? Yeah, we have time? well over a hundred trillion uh, bacteria. And since the Human Microbiome Project was, you know, finished about five years ago now, I mean, we didn't know that these guys really existed. Um, in fact, I was, uh, I was on my podcast, the Dr. Gundry podcast, we had Dr. David uh, Kessler, who was head of the FDA mm. in the Reagan years, who made the um, guidelines for the labels, the labeling laws on the back of packages that you know show saturated mm -hmm. fats and carbohydrates. And the labels, by the way, if we get into this, are completely wrong. Mm -hmm. um, they were forced on the Reagan administration by big food companies. Wow. And so, anyhow, you... If you feed bacteria what they want to eat, and that's is all in the longevity paradox, they will take care of you. They will not, they'll take care of the wall, the lining of your gut, and they, you will not actually age, mm. which is kind of cool. So if you take care of, of them, the of the bugs in your body, you will not age. Right, so you got a hundred wow. trillion bacteria. You have over 10,000 different species of bacteria. And just last year, they discovered another thousand, so who knows? Right. So 99% of the genetic material that exists in you and me 
is non-human genetic material. Wow. We're only, our genes are actually so unimportant, it's kind of humorous. <laughs> and when people take a family history, what they're actually finding out is if, you, if your parents taught you how to eat, and most people's parents teach the kids how to eat, and your parents had diabetes, or your parents had high blood pressure, or your parents had coronary artery disease, and you ate like your parents did, the odds are that you will do that. Right. For two reasons, the food choices that you made, but more importantly, you inherited your bacteria mm. from your parents and actually your siblings. And so it's not the genes of your parents that mean you are susceptible to heart disease or um, Alzheimer's or whatever, right? It's not the genes of your parents, it's typically the, the foods they ate that you're probably eating the exact same foods that cause the same type of problems. Correct, yeah. Right. I mean, there are, there's, there is an Alzheimer's gene and my program, according to Dale Bredesen, is the best way not to activate that gene. Um, and there are certain genes that people inherit that make the world's meanest, nastiest, stickiest cholesterol that most doctors don't even measure. And oh, by the way, if you're prescribed a statin drug, um, you know, a lipid-lowering drug, mm -hmm. it actually worsens the this other particle. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, there are genes, but they're such a small part. Uh, Nature Magazine had a big article in <clears throat> late 2018 uh, I think proving that only about seven or eight percent of what will happen to us is based on our genes and 97 or 98 percent of what's going to happen to us <clears throat> is based on our environment and our food choices yeah, our decisions our yeah. decisions yeah now you said we can you know Aging is essentially a choice is what I'm hearing you say, but if someone watching this saying, well, Dr. Gundry, you've got white hair, you look older than when you were 10 years old. So yes. How, how can, so how can, how can you say that you're, you can eat certain things that can reverse aging or can make you not age when you look older than when you were younger? That's true. I, I'm definitely chronologically older, but uh, recently on my uh, podcast, uh, I had Dr. Terry Walls, who uh, I think is very famous, rightfully so, for uh, reversing her MS, her multiple wow. yeah, sclerosis. Uh, and she did it via diet. Uh, she did it initially by eating nine cups of vegetables a day. Mm. And uh, I, I dare people to try to eat nine cups of vegetables. A lot of a fiber, day. right? A lot, <laughs> a lot of fiber. And, and we'll, we'll get back to fiber because I think that's probably the key. And this is actually what Jack Elaine was trying to say. If it tastes good, spit it out. And Terry became famous for telling people that uh, she, when you look in the toilet every morning, you should see a very large coiled snake looking back up at you. <laughs> and uh, in fact, in, in the plant paradox uh, in the, the original manuscript, I had said, when you look in the toilet, you should see a giant anaconda looking back <laughs> up at you. And my editor, uh, Julie Wills, you know, called me up, she said, uh, do you know there's a movie where yeah, an anaconda is coming, the toilet. Yeah, coming, out, <laughs> coming out of the toilet? And I said, oh yeah, she said, I don't think we want that visual yeah, yeah. in your book. And she said, well, let's, let's take that out. <laughs> so, but what we didn't know, what you, you didn't know, I didn't know, is that that giant coiled snake is not the fiber and the roughage mm. that we ate. It's actually bacteria that have eaten the fiber. No way. And the bacteria inside of us? Oh, yeah. That's coming out. That's coming out. So most of your oh my poop gosh. is, if you will, baby bacteria. No way. And so the more... So we want to get the bacteria out of us? No, you want them to grow and prosper. And the more they grow and <laughs> it prosper... It's like a, aliens in our body. It's well, like you know, you're, you're absolutely right. And one of the things that is kind of hard to embrace is we we probably only exist 
as a place for bacteria to live on Earth. Wow. And, and you know, intelligence... So if there was no bacteria inside of us... We're done. We would die. So we know that we can breed germ-free mice. An interesting fun fact that I put in the longevity paradox, my fifth grade science project was to build a germ-free mouse environment. This was in 19... Wow. 1960 wow. um, and so this isn't my first rodeo <laughs> um, so so we can build we can raise germ-free mice that have no bacteria in them have no bugs in them and they live short lives really they have horrible immune systems they get sick they they get sick yeah and they so they're the basis of so much of what we know. And so you can, so bacteria are incredibly important. And we know now that these bacteria actually teach our immune system from day one. In fact, scary, we used to think that the placenta, where the, you know, the baby of the womb, the uterus, that feeds the baby is sterile. Of course it has to be, because the baby has to be sterile. The placenta is full of bacteria. Feeding, Feeding the baby. The ba and it, it turns safe. out that the bacteria in the placenta actually give information to the baby's immune system before the baby even pops out of the womb. And so the we need these viruses, it, these we, good viruses. We need these viruses and bacteria. We need them. Hmm. And in, in fact, fun fact, long ago, the only way to treat bacterial infections were viruses that could actually infect bacteria and kill viruses. And Eli Lilly Company from Indianapolis got its start, this giant pharmaceutical company, as what's called a bacteriophage company. Bacteriophages are viruses that infect bacteria. And it turns out that viruses uh, actually are really useful in us as well. We have mm. trillions and trillions and trillions of viruses in us right now. What's the difference between a good virus and a bad virus? If the good virus is doing what it's supposed to do. Um, okay, let's, let's do a deep dive into microbiology. Okay, and what is the definition of virus? Okay, so a virus <clears throat> is probably the s smallest reproducible form of life however we want to define life. <clears throat> so most living things are capable of reproducing themselves one way or another, mm. dividing or multiplying. multiplying one way or another. Just like humans. Exactly. So a virus unfortunately has to have, cannot replicate itself. It has to borrow another cell and tell, take over the cell's machinery to manufacture more copies of viruses. Mm. And that's how they get reproduced. But in the end, every living creature is here just to make a new copy. And you, know, you and I only, only exist uh, was to make a new copy. Wow. And, you know, I hopefully actually only exist so my bacteria can make new copies of them themselves. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a condominium yes. for my inhabitants. Duplication, yeah. And if, if they're happy and I'm a good landlord to them, they will keep the place nice. And yeah. they actually would like me to stick around a very long time because I'm their home. So if I give them, my tenants, what they want, uh, they'll keep me around. Okay. All right, so getting so, back to Terry Walls. Yes. So Terry Walls and her giant anacondas. And whenever we do a podcast with her uh, from Iowa, she has these dolls of poop. Um, really? Yeah. I got to I gotta oh, meet this person. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she, so um, we, uh, we've become friends through the years and our diets uh, recommendations are very similar and becoming more and more similar as time goes on. And recently she uh, and her wife uh, began doing time-restricted feeding. Um, 
for the last 18 years during the winter, I only eat calories two hours a day. So mm -hmm. at 22 out of 24 hours, wow. I'm not eating many calories. And I've done that for 18 years now. So that's, that's pretty interesting time-restricted feeding. Time-restricted feeding means you limit the number of hours you eat in the day. Wow. Um, so she, and we had talked about this, so she and her wife actually really started doing this. And I, I see her about once a year, and I uh, noticed on, on the podcast, you know, she looks the best I have ever seen her. And so we're talking about this. And she said, well, you know, uh, I started, you know, after kind of reading and listening and, you know, longevity paradox, that this, you, you know, this is something real. And it's not just me, other people have done this. Um, and we started doing it. And I started doing it. And then my wife said, you know, uh, there's something here. I'm going to join you. And they have kids. And now they... He, she's saying our kids have noticed that we are getting younger mm. and and i said well you know this you're right i said because you know i've known you through the years and you clearly <clears throat> are you know younger now than when i knew you a few years ago and she said yeah our kids notice and they're calling us you know benjamin button because right. uh, we're de-aging so i think this whole anti-aging thing is wrong i think it is really quite possible to de-age and as I talk about in the longevity paradox, what's fascinating is that, and you can prove this in animal models, that you age as your microbiome changes, number one, but more importantly, that the wall of your gut is, should be impermeable, even though it's only one cell thick. And the surface area of your gut, my gut, is the same as a tennis court. So inside of you mm. and me is a tennis court. Crazy. Surface area. And the problem is that that wall of our gut is only one cell thick. And these cells are held together with uh, tight junctions. Uh, best example for anyone who's no longer young is Red Rover, Red Rover, which sure. we all played as a kid, yeah. where we locked arms and uh -huh. people ran across and a big guy like I always you. ran through. Oh, oh yeah. let's go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you're the guy, you know, and the two, Break two, the yeah, the two girls, go, ah, here comes Lewis. <laughs> ah! And they don't get to play that in school anymore, mm -hmm. by the way. It's too dangerous. Oh, right. Yeah. Too dangerous. get hurt. There's yeah. like people like you. Yeah. <laughs> so they're all locked arm in arm. And as long as they're locked arm in arm, all those, you know, 100 trillion bacteria and all the other toxins stay on their side of the wall. On the other side of the wall, 60 to 70 percent of all your white blood cells, all your immune system is lined up on that wall. Why? Because that's basically the border. And if your invading army is coming through the border, mm -hmm. you want a guy, you, got, you want to have your army on the other side. And What's cool is as long as that wall is intact, you do not age. Mm. But as that wall becomes leaky, and that's the whole story of leaky the law, gut, leaky, leaky gut, yeah. then you begin to age. And Hippocrates, 2,500 years ago, said all disease begins in the gut. Mm -hmm. And he was absolutely right. All diseases begin, and I add on, end in the gut. And, you know, that's actually a good segue into uh, a current problem with a virus that mm -hmm. we're not used to. Um, and what I've been trying to do with my patients through the years is teach them how to heal their gut. So. Anybody with an autoimmune disease uh, has a leaky gut, period, end of story. And I know this and I can say that because we can't, we measure 70% of my practice is autoimmune patients. And how, how do you know if you have a leaky gut if you haven't been tested per se? Would you see rashes? Would you see... So I got news for you. If you, have, you, an auto, tired, if you, you have an autoimmune disease, you have a leaky gut. Gotcha. If you have high blood pressure, you have a leaky gut. If you have coronary artery disease, you have a leaky gut. If you have diabetes, you have a leaky gut. 
So leaky gut is the cause of, of all everything, disease. Of all disease. A leaky gut is the cause of all disease. So yep. If you cure the leaky gut, That's, you should be able to heal the disease. So far, so good. So, so how do we heal so the far. leaky gut? Okay, so it's actually... If that's the key. Well, and that's why I got so focused on these cute little plant particles called lectins. Yes. And so there's lots of gut healing protocols out there. Mm -hmm. And what intrigued me was, uh, you know, lectins are a, a plant defense system. And yeah. plants have multiple defense systems, but I kind of got interested in lectins. And they're little proteins that sh seek out sugar molecules. And they- Love that sugar, yeah, gotta get rid of it. Yeah, they, they are after specific sugar molecules. And interestingly enough, these sugar molecules line our nose, mouth, intestines. They line the lining of our blood vessels. Mm -hmm. They line our joints. They exist in the space between two nerves where nerves talk to each other. And these proteins are designed, if they can, to stick to these sugar molecules and act, if you will, like a splinter. Mm. an irritant. Uh, they are also really good at breaking the tight junctions that hold the wall of our gut together. And if you think about it from a plant standpoint, if you had a system where you could make leaky gut in someone who eats you and your immune system got all inflamed mm -hmm. and you felt bad or it hurt to move or you got depressed. By the way, leaky gut is the major cause of depression and really? anxiety. Really? Stress. Dr. Amen and I went through this on wow. his podcast. Yeah. yeah. And so if you had a predator who was eating you and that predator wasn't doing very well, a smart predator would say, you know, <clears throat> every time I eat this plant, uh, or this plant baby. I die. Yeah, I don't I, feel good. Yeah. Or, or, you know, or I don't reproduce well, or I'm not growing well. I, I'm gonna go eat something else. Mm -hmm. And we also evolved bacteria that enjoy eating lectins. Believe it or not, there's a bacteria that likes to eat gluten. Mm -hmm. uh, gluten is a lectin. Um, and so, unfortunately, mm -hmm. now in our modern society, we've killed off most of the defense system against lectins. Mm. It's to use a football analogy, if I've got my first string defense injured, my second string injured, and now I'm pulling guys out of the stands to be my <laughs> linebackers, and you're a running back, yeah. a lectin, man, yeah, yeah. you know. You're you, scoring every you, time. Yeah, you may be the worst running back in the world, but <laughs> if there's nobody there to tackle <laughs> you, you're gonna score every time. Thanks so much for watching, but don't go anywhere. This next one is sure to surprise you. Sugar also takes a huge toll on your immune system. And most of us don't know of a very famous study done